have some things I want to do here for the first couple of minutes, but let me welcome back our uh, patriot journalist and friend from so many years, D.B. Kidd, who always uh, nails it to the wall perfectly. And boy, do we have some things for you tonight. Hello, D.B. Welcome back. Thank Hi. you. Oh, thank you. Two words? Oh, jeez. <laughs> you splurged on me. Thank you. Well. I did. I yeah. did. <laughs> All right. Well, I did. I did. There's one, two, three, four. All right. Well, I'm being deluged with verbiage. Now, <clears throat> did you happen to see Obama... At that Canadian, I, so I think it's my top story. At the Canadian press conference yesterday, I cannot watch him. I read the transcripts because they're always online. Yeah. Oh no, they're, they're horrible. No he question. Is, in my opinion, <clears throat> just like Hillary Clinton, just like Janet Reno, these people are human evil. Period. Oh yeah. Uh, so and as words, long as the transcripts are there, yeah. I'll read the transcripts. But I cannot stomach watching these people. It's it's not good for a person's health, for one thing. And uh, to watch them lie and to actually to watch what he did at that press conference, reading the transcripts, they are trying to re restart, start kick the North American Union. Yes, absolutely. The Mexican president made that quite clear. Yes. The NAU. Mm -hmm. Don't forget that, folks. It's 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 coming back. It's not forgotten. Well, They're, I believe that they. <clears throat> I believe they did. Well, you you have a couple things to go through, and we can do all that. Go ahead and do. do what yeah. What I want to do, uh, and I I'm going to go through the bottom of the hour break, so we'll have more time for Dee Dee. But I want to play this for you, who may have missed it. I just saw it well an hour or two ago, and there are things. Uh, about this uh, homosexual Muslim president that, that many of you know, some of you don't know, but most of us know he's on a teleprompter. He is a, a teleprompter king. He's very good at reading off a teleprompter. We know that. He went to this, I guess it was a three-nation press conference yesterday, and was not on prompter, at least not with a script per se. He was trying to wing it, all right? Now, this is the transcript you read from. And there are several things that I saw, and having worked in television news for a long time as an anchorman, a news director, and I know the game, I know the visuals and the imagery and all that. Uh, this guy, without a teleprompter, as many of you know, is inept. He is incompetent. He is mentally a bumbling fool unless he can somehow recall a recorded message he is supposed to spew. Uh, during this conference yesterday, he, if you watch him, seems drugged or hung over. Uh, his eyes are not fully open. They're at three-quarter. They're hanging down. He is, uh, he's clearly a man at the end of, of uh, eight years of horror. He knows it. But beyond that... He just, he acts like a man who just doesn't give a damn. Now, he's clearly trying to ad lib to the questions asked of him by the press without them being fully addressed and scripted in his teleprompter. Now, that's not to say that the prompter is not being used because he's looking back and forth. I know what he's looking at. And I have no doubt in my mind, D.B., that uh, his speech writers are sitting in the back room or wherever they may be and they're connected to the prompter, and they can put words up there and phrases that are supposed to trigger him when he gets a question, so he'll know how to answer. It's a keyword kind of a thing, phrases. Uh, he foundered, and he kept looking at the prompter. There may have been some trouble with it. I don't know. The guy was absolutely uh, grotesque to watch. The pauses, the delays... And whenever he was trying to come up with uh, an answer or something intelligent to say, whenever someone, you know this, Steve, whenever somebody starts to use their hands too much, they're, they're reaching, it's a distraction. They're, he's trying to do something with his hands. He can't mentally come up with the words. So his hands were, were just gesturing and gesticulating and, and kind of in spasm. Just take a look at it. It's the top story, and you'll see what I mean.
Now I'm going to play a little bit of this. But before I do, I want to do one other little short thing. This is 30 seconds. About a month ago or less, I saw an interview clip. So 30 seconds with his three speechwriters. I don't know if you've seen these guys or not, D.B., but they're obviously three. They're young guys in their 20s. Uh, they're all homosexual. There's no question about it. The way they act, they're, 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 you know the mannerisms. It's the body language. Mm -hmm. that, that's fine. I don't care who he hires to write speeches. But I want you to know that what this man says to the world is being written by basically these three guys, two of whom you're going to hear now, and they're being interviewed by Charlie Rose. And the one guy off camera to the right, you'll see him briefly in this clip. I'll rerun the clip tonight later. Uh, says something about Obamacare. And in answer to the primary guy who's speaking, who's talking about the seriousness of the work, and, and but it's kind of fun. And, and then this other guy makes a comment about, remember when you wrote, yeah, and you'll be able to keep your doctors, too, about Obamacare, and they laugh. This, this really should tell you a lot about where Obama is getting uh, his, his speeches. The, these people don't care about you. And it extends right into Hillary Clinton to the deepest layer of his, his her DNA, if she has any DNA. I'm not sure if she does. So listen to this 30-second clip. Now, this is Charlie Rose with President Obama's speechwriters, and they're laughing about the Obamacare lie that they wrote. you got, you got to get this. Here. Equal impact on serious speeches because it's about style, use of language, etc. Um, I really like, I was very, the, the joke speech is the most fun part of this, but the things I'm the most proud of were the more serious speeches, I think. Healthcare, um, uh, and then the other guy sitting to his left, after he said health care, has to jump in. I get this. Economic speeches, and I think... I Love it wrote the line about, um, if you like your insurance, you can keep it. How dare you. <laughs> 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 and, and you know what? It's still true. No. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, uh, if you like your insurance, and he said doctor too, uh, you can keep it. Remember that? You can keep your insurance. Don't worry. You don't have to do Obamacare. These guys wrote that crap. And they're laughing about it. So anyway, no, they, not, not a surprise, but it's sickening. You know what it reminds me of? Remember in, during the Enron disaster where people lost everything? Some of those uh, Wall Street guys who were reselling all of the energy in California, there was, you know, the whole situation. Oh, sure. Yeah, ball. I do. I do remember. Yeah. Those guys were caught on audio laughing because uh -huh. people were suffering over what they did. They, they thought it was yeah. very funny. They don't care. They don't care no, about they us. Don't. They, nope. they are, uh, if this was a French uh, Revolution uh, setting, uh, I would like to see them first up the ramp. Uh, this, they're really disgusting. Just hideous. They're not Americans. They're, so, they're sociopaths. They have no empathy for anybody. None. They're narciss narcissistic people. Well, who, they feel nothing. Those guys that I listened to that, well, everybody else did, for Enron, we're talking about thousands of employees who had everything vested in retirement. They lost everything. Yeah. And these were the guys behind the scenes manipulating the prices, and they thought it was very funny. Oh, I know. And as, I know. as far as Obamacare, Human suffering to them is a riot. Is nothing. Look at the people, what happened when this Obamacare crap hit. People's uh, health care premiums went up to the point where people literally were not being able to eat a meal the last couple of days of the month because they had to pay the health care premiums to take care of their children. Absolutely. I mean, this has impacted right. millions of Americans, millions. And when Obamacare finally melts down, which it's in the process of doing, it's going to be a $50 billion wash, oh, wasted, sure. yeah. all money borrowed. Yeah. And look at the grief the and suffering. Broke. That's incalculable. Yes. You know. yes, yes, it is. And they think it's funny. Here's, I'll, I'm going to play this again. Now, this is John Lovett primarily talking, and then uh, one of his gay uh, caballeros is sitting to his left and another to his right. There's three of them there, and then Charlie Rose. But you've got to hear the arrogance. 
the, ah, all right, here, listen. It's just a 30-second little soundbite, and I hope it'll play without a commercial. I know this Google is saturating <laughs> things. Here we go. I think it's My good. point is that you have equal impact on serious speeches because it's about style, use of language, etc. Uh, I really like, I was very, the, the joke speech is most... Yeah, he's saying now, I'm, he's being serious. The joke speech is the most important speech I had fun with. But then he said... Uh, the serious fun speeches. part of this, but the things I'm the most proud of were the more serious speeches. I think healthcare, um, uh, economic speeches, and I think I love it. Wrote the line about um, if you like your insurance, you can keep it. How dare you? It's true. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? It's still true. No. Yeah. But, uh, uh, okay, there you go. That's what they think of you, and you're struggling to uh, maintain your health care insurance. These people are in on. Uh, the rape of America, and they are laughing at you. They don't care about you at all. This demo so-called Democrat administration, Hillary Clinton, the same, and how anybody who is above room temperature can even for a moment think about certifying, sanctifying, or voting for this career criminal. This woman has more felonies behind her than a freight train has cars. And they are actually talking about her as if she ought to run. We're going to get into this with Devi in a couple of minutes. Now, let me do this, please. I want to play a little bit. Now, here's Obama at this news conference. It'll be about three minutes I'm going to play. I want you to keep in mind he's using his hands. You'll be able to see it's a top story in headlines. He, he can't think. He keeps looking at the prompter like, come on, guys, give me a key word. Give me something to say. And he's trying to put Trump down and populism. Part of it, I'm convinced, is that he, he's jealous. He had Trump has got this ravenous support. Nobody cares about Obama anymore. He's not Mr. Cutesy Boy. He looks 20 years older than he did three or four years ago. Not just the gray hair, either. Uh, the, the guy is just dirt. All right, now, now listen to this. Davey, if you want to say anything, just say it. Well, it'll be fine. Talk right over it. I'll stop it. I want to say one last thing, though, because it's been a running thread in a bunch of uh, questions, and that's this whole issue of populism. Maybe so I can pull up in a dictionary quickly uh, the phrase populism, but I, I'm not prepared to concede the notion that... He's looking at the teleprompter now for guidance. Oh, some of the rhetoric that's been popping up is populist. He's looking, looking, looking. Uh, 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 uh. When I ran in 2008, and the reason I ran again, and the reason even after I leave this office, I will continue to work in some capacity in public service, He's reading is now. because I care about people, and I want to make sure every kid in America has the same opportunities that I have. Sure you do. And I care about poor people who are working really hard and now here comes a string of vomitous lies that are standard operating procedure in any political stump speech i care about poor people don't have a chance to advance and i care about workers being able to poor people have a collective voice workers in the workplace and get their fair share of the pie their fair share of the pie and i want to make sure that Kids are getting a decent education. Ah, kids. And a working mom has child care that she can trust. Ah, education, child care. These are novel ideas. And I think we should have a tax system that's ah, fair. Ta taxes. And the fair. folks ah. like me who have been have benefited. And the folks like me humbles himself. And the folks like me, just like you folks, we're all folks. Benefited from the incredible opportunities in my society should pay a little bit more to make sure that somebody else's kids who weren't as lucky have those same opportunities. Ah, communist Marxist distribution of wealth. I got it. And I, th I think there, been, there should be curbs on uh, the excesses of our financial sector so that we don't repeat the debacles of 2007 and 2008. He's reading. He's getting keywords. I think there should be transparency. Ah, transparency. 
Wasn't this going to be the most transparent administration in American history, D.V.? Wasn't that, wasn't that the pledge? Well, they uh, outdid in... themselves to become the most criminal element next to Hillary and Bill. Yeah, here we go. How our systems work so that we don't have people dodging taxes by setting up offshore accounts. Oh, really? Like the Clinton Foundation? Uh, in other places and avoiding the responsibilities that their fellow citizens who don't have fancy lawyers and accountants. Uh, uh, and you don't? You creep? You know, that, 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 that they can't benefit from, from uh, those same tricks. Uh, f- 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 every, every time he stammers, he's not getting keywords on the prompter. He's where, looking at the and, prompter. And where are his, his daughters? They're with that piece of baggage that he's married to yeah, Michael. over in Africa <clears throat> and other countries. Mm-hmm. Those two girls go to private schools. Yeah, she wears three, four, five thousand, eight thousand dollar dresses. And they, they, what, what, was, what is this trip going to cost the American people? Another five or ten million dollars? Easy, easy. All right, let me run yeah. this through here. I'm almost done. You got to see this, though. Watch him stammer. Watch his hands. That makes me a populist. Uh, Somebody else who has never shown any regard for workers. Trump, he's talking about. Has never fought on behalf of social justice issues or making sure that poor kids are getting a decent shot at life or have health care. In fact, have worked. Health care, kids, and he's this guy is the warrior. He's fought for them his whole career against economic opportunity for workers and ordinary people. Folks. They don't suddenly become a populist because uh, they say something uh, controversial in order to win votes. Uh, he sees a measure of populism. Country. I'm going to stop it here. Just a minute. That's nativism. Or xenophobia. There it is. I wanted to get that out. Okay. Nativism and xenophobia. That's, that's a fancy word for racism. This, this SOB is the biggest racist, probably, uh, who has uh, sat in the Oval Office, God knows in how long, maybe since, since Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln. Yeah, they see we're on the same page there. Uh, yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, so anyway, I just I didn't mean to go off on this, but it just is so repulsive to me that, that he we is. have. Oh, anyway, the, listening to him is an embarrassment, and the canned phrases of <clears throat> "it takes a village." Yeah. How many times yeah. did he say "kids"? Yep. You know, it's social justice is right out of the Karl Marx playbook. And it doesn't have a damn thing to do with the President of the United States' official duties in Article 2, Section 2 of the Constitution. So, thank God we don't have to put up with him for much longer. And his handlers will make sure, as they do all of these traitors who sit in the White House, they will live a comfortable life and the money will continue to flow to them because they did what they were told to do. They got the job done.